here are a couple of tips that could really help listeners not only read faster, but improve their focus and their retention and understanding of the information. Because if you ever read a page in a book and just forgot what you just read, and you had to reread it, and then you still forgot what you just read, this could really help. So the first thing is, we all have books on our shelf we haven't read yet, right? And the goal is, when you pick up the book, if you use a visual pacer when you read, you'll read it faster. And now what's a visual pacer? It could be your finger, it could be a pen, it could be a highlighter, it could be a mouse on a computer. And what you're doing is you're not touching the page or the screen, you're just going right above it and just underlining what you're reading. Now, I want you to not just believe everything I'm saying, you could test it out also. When we're done with this episode, pick up a book that you're reading, put a mark in the margin where you're left off. And what I want you to do is set your phone, your timer to go off in 60 seconds. So we're gonna read for 60 seconds. And I want you to read how you would normally read, not using your finger, but just how you would normally read for comprehension. And then at the end of 60 seconds, I want you to put a mark in the margin where you left off. And then count the number of lines that you just read. And that's the lines per minute. Now, set the timer again for another 60 seconds and then pick up where you left off but this time just underline the words and you're just underlining the words as, as, as you would read and then at the end of 60 seconds put a mark in the margin and then count the number of lines you just read for the majority of the listeners they'll find that second number will be 25 to almost 50 percent greater and you don't have to work any harder. So it's not about working harder, it's about working more intelligently, right? And so the reason why it works is number one, one of the challenges we have when we read is we back skip. Back skip? What, what is back skip? What does that even mean, Jim? We reread words. Oh. And this keeps you from doing that. Some people reread whole lines, right? On the other side of it, your eyes are attracted to motion. So if something ran across your room, you wouldn't look at me, you would look at what moves. Because as a hunter gatherer, your eyes are trained to look at movement. Because if you're in a bush and you're hunting lunch, let's say it's a rabbit or a carrot, depending on your diet, if the bush next to you moves, you have to look. Because number one, it could be lunch, or number two, you could be lunch. So when your finger is going across the page, it draws your attention through, as opposed to your attention being outside of you. And then the final reason, use your finger while you read, it's kind of interesting. Kids use their finger while they read naturally, until you organically, until we tell them not to. And you do also, because when I ask people to count the number of lines, maybe they didn't use their finger when they initially read, but if I ask you to count the number of lines, what do you do? Use your finger as, as, a, as a visual aid to help you to focus. But the final reason is your, your certain senses work very closely together. For example, have you ever, like had a great tasting fruit right, right from the farmer's market, but you're not actually tasting a peach, you're smelling the peach, but your sense of smell and taste are so closely linked, your mind can't tell the difference. It, it can tell the difference when you're sick, when you can't breathe out of your nose, what does food taste like? It tastes more bland, right? And so just as your sense of smell and taste are closely linked, so is your sense of sight and your sense of touch. That when you use your finger while you read, People will say they literally feel more in touch with their reading. Seriously? This one tool, just using a visual cue or pacer or whatever you called it, can increase your reading speed by 50%? Is that really true? Absolutely. 25, 50%. Some of the listeners doing this exercise will actually double their reading speed. And think about it, the value of that. The average person spends about four hours a day processing information. You think about social media and emails and books and reports and research, whatever you have to go through in the newspaper. If you could just cut that in half, you double your reading speed, so you save two hours a day. What's two hours a day over the course of a year? In fact, what's just one hour a day saved over the course of a year? 365 hours. How many 40 hour work weeks is that? Over nine? Over nine weeks of productivity, you gain back, you reclaim. Two months of productivity is back of yours, saving into something ubiquitous like reading. You know what I really love about this, Jim, is that you don't have to try harder. 
What you just taught us is a skill that will help us read 50% faster just by using the tip of a pen and leveraging the super wiring of how our eyes are wired to track to movement. That's incredible. So let's jump into the next skill, which is what is your technique for always remembering people's names? Yeah. So a name is, is very important. I would say, remember mom. This is just uh, I mean, there are a couple dozen examples in the book and techniques, but remember name, a name is, they say is the sweetest sound to a person's ears. Mm. It's probably the number one networking business etiquette skill. Cause how are you going to show somebody you're going to care for their future, their health, their family, whatever you have to offer, if you don't care enough, just remember them. Right. Matt, Maya Angelou say, People will forget what you say, they'll forget what you did, but they'll always remember how you made them feel. Yes. You know, and that's so important to remember names. M O M, of course it's an acronym because I'm doing this short form in podcast form. The first M is just is motivation, meaning having that purpose. A lot of people won't remember names because they they don't they haven't touched the reason. So mm. if you ask yourself, simple thing you could do before you meet somebody, ask yourself, why do I want to remember this person's name? Just get in the habit of doing that. Maybe it's just show the person some respect. Maybe it's to make a connection. Maybe it's make a new friend or get a referral, make a sale. If you don't have a reason, you won't get the result. If you come up with the reason. So for example, if there was a suitcase, like most people say, I'm horrible at remember names, but I challenge people on their BS, right? Their belief systems. If there was a suitcase, if Mel and I had a suitcase of a million dollars cash, tax-free, if you just remember the name of the next stranger you meet, who's going to remember that name? Everybody, <laughs> right? <laughs> Everybody will. So it, as, as a coach, I'm going to call people on their BS, right? Their belief systems. It had nothing to do with your capabilities. You can remember names. Are you motivated to remember that name, right? And one of the ways to do it is ask a question and tune into why. Okay. So to remember names, you have to remember mom. And the M stands for motivation. Got that. Why are you motivated to remember their name? That makes sense. What does the O stand for? The O in mom, this is big is observation. A lot of people aren't forgetting the name. They're just not paying attention. The art of memory is the art of attention. Like I I remember years ago, I got to, I got to go to this fundraiser and it was 2000 people. We're sitting at the table. I'm the first one there. And after that, then another person, Forrest Whitaker, the Oscar winner sits right next to me. And then Richard Branson sits right next to him. And then Ashton Kutcher and Ashton Kutcher's twin brother, who I didn't know he had a twin brother, sits there. And then President Clinton sits right next to me. Now, I had met him a few years before, very briefly. And he, when he saw him at the table, he called me by name. He said, hello, by name. And I was like, wow, that's pretty impressive because I'm sure he meets a lot of people. And then I was like, oh, okay, people, he knew who he was sitting with, right, obviously. And then... I swear he picks up on the conversation that we had three years before and nobody was privy to that. And I was like, you know, I'm a memory guy, right? I need to know how you're doing this. And he tells me the story of his grandfather in Arkansas in the living room and he would tell stories, but afterwards to the kids, he would quiz each of the kids to see if they were paying attention. Mm. Now, when he's explained this to me, I also noticed at a meta level, I was like, wow, I feel like I'm the only one in this room because the way he's communicating with me, it's like there are a lot more more important people in that room, especially at that table. And yet I feel like he's not looking over my shoulder or seeing who else is important. And I realized politics aside, people would say he's a great communicator, a great connector, a great charisma, and he's got an incredible memory and his powerful presence. And I think, Mel, his incredible memory and his powerful presence comes from being powerfully present. That is incredible memory and his powerful presence with people comes from being powerfully present with people, right? Because most people, they're not forgetting the name, they're just not even hearing the name, why? Because they're looking around or they're thinking about how to respond. They're waiting for their turn to speak. And so an easy way to remember names, listen. And even if you wanna do a brain exercise, think about the word listen and scramble the letters and it spells another word perfectly. It spells the word silent. And so just be there and listen. I love that. Because being truly present when you're with someone will help you make them feel like they're the only one in the room. And you just taught us that incredible memory comes from being powerfully present. And so when you're sitting there and you're present and you're silent and you're taking in what the heck they're saying, you're also going to remember what they're saying. That's so cool. So what is the last M in mom? The last M are the methods, right? And here's the quick method. 
suave. When you're, next time you're at an event and you want to, you want to say, I'm going to remember names. I'm more conscious of it because I listened to that episode. Right. Look at yourself and say, I'm going to be suave. The S, say the name right away. When somebody gives you their name, greet them back using their name because it means you get to hear it twice. And also, it means you, you don't want to have a 20 minute conversation with somebody. Like say there's a lot of background noise, 20 minute conversation with Ted and say goodbye, Ed. Right? You want to be corrected up front. I like the fact that you say the name immediately because even if you say it wrong, they'll correct you and they're not going yes. to be offended because if you say it immediately, they it's just that you heard it wrong. It's not yes. that you didn't remember it. And also, if you notice, well, so keep going. So you, Yeah, no, absolutely. So you say the name, then you use it three or four times in the conversation. And then the A in, in, in suave, ask. This works really well for people who have unusual names or names you haven't heard uh, before. What can you ask about a person's name? How do you say your name? How do you say your name? How do you spell your name? Where is it from? Who were you named after? Does it mean something in another language, right? So everyone's favorite topic is their name. Actually, when you're talking about the reticular activating system, which is gears your focus by asking questions, because we're mo our brain is mostly deleting information, the name is, is up on top because think about it, it's probably one of the first words you heard, probably one of the first words you learned how to write. And then think about all the encouragement, the emotional, like, wow, congrats. Like, so it's, it's, it's one of the reasons why it's the sweetest sound, but ask about a person's name. They'll be flattered, especially unusual names. Okay. I just want to make sure that as you're listening to Jim, you picked up on the fact that he has this acronym SUAVE and SUAVE is what we're using as the tool to help us remember someone's name. You said it kind of fast, Jim, so I'm just kind of slowing it down for those of us who may not be as quick in the super brain as you are. The S is for say it. Got that. Makes sense. Say it as soon as they say their name. U is for use it, which also makes sense because the more you use it in a sentence without being creepy, the more you're likely to remember it. A, ask about it. What does the V in suave stand for? The V in suave? is visualize. And this is how I do it in front of audiences. If there's time on stage, I'll have 30, 40, 50 people stand up, pass around a microphone, and I'll memorize you know, upwards of 100 names, depending on how much time we have. But how I do it is I would just visualize the person's name, meaning most people listening are better with faces than they are with names. Yes. Right? You go to someone and say, I remember your face, but I'm sorry, I forgot your name. You never go to someone and say, I remember the opposite. I remember your name, but I forgot your face. Right? That doesn't That's happen. True. But your, your visual <laughs> cortex is, takes up more real estate. <sighs> and so we tend to remember what we see. And if we tend to remember what we see, try seeing what we want to remember. You oh. meet someone for the first time and their name is Mary. Imagine for a split second that she's carrying two lambs underneath her arms. Mary had a little lamb, right? You meet someone named David, just hit him in the nose with a slingshot. It's David and Goliath, right? And people say that's so childish, but that helps you to remember it. Because if you could see it, feel it, and hear it, you're not going to forget it. Got it. Right? Okay. So you're hearing it, you're visualizing it, and you're making it kind of funny or ludicrous, and then you're not, you're not going to forget it. So a person's name is Mike. Imagine they jump on a table and sing on a microphone. And when you say goodbye to them, you're going to remember, oh, that was the guy that did that. What's his name? Mike. Right. So a person name is John. You could well picture whatever whatever you picture, right? <laughs> and then <laughs> and then finally the E in Suave stands for end. End the conversation saying goodbye using their name. Because if you could walk into a room of strangers and leave saying let's say twenty people and leave saying goodbye to every single one of them, who are they all gonna remember? You, right? And that's a, that's an absolute standout that standout skill. I can't remember anything. You ever walk into the kitchen and you get to the kitchen and you're like, wait a minute, why did I come into the kitchen? 